I was running a game of old school essentials a little while back and my players were running a fresh group of adventures ranging between the levels of two and three. They had heard rumors of a powerful weapon that was left behind in the ruins of a castle of the old empire and they decided to set off into the wilds to explore and find this castle and weapon. Being a young group of adventurers, they didn't have the coin to hire hirelings or retainers for their voyage, so in total their party size was five player characters. The party traveled through a forest before breaking out into a hilly grasslands, which is when I rolled for a random encounter that would happen for them. Consulting and rolling on my random encounter table, I found that the party was to encounter orcs on the grasslands. Now in old school essentials, if you're playing by the book, which is the same as the Moldvay Cook basic expert rules, it says that the wilderness encounter with orcs is 1d6 times 10, quite a bit of orcs. I rolled the die and got a six. Consulting the book one more time, I learned that the orc bands will often have a leader, so I added one more. What's the difference between 60 and 61 orcs when you're already outnumbered 12 to one? Seems pretty moot to me. Now as a quick sidebar, Unlike the basic expert book, in my world, orcs are not immediately hostile or aggressive towards other humanoids. For this campaign, I wanted my orcs to have a little bit more nuance to them. If you don't in your campaign, that is totally fine. But for my world and my group, that was how we were playing. 61 orcs versus five adventures in an open grasslands. I checked for surprise and neither group was. Checking for distance, I found that the orcs and the party were about 160 yards away from each other, which I ruled to mean that the group had crested the top of a hill only to see the band of orcs moving on the previously obstructed side. Well, at least I gave them the high ground. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! What was the party going to do? Faced with this large band of orcs who had sighted them, clearly armed and dangerous and vastly outnumbered. Hi, welcome back to the Earth Moat. I'm Randall, and today we're talking about random encounters and how their design and philosophy has shifted with Dungeons and Dragons over the years. Random encounters to me are such a fun way to experience the game. They really embrace that idea of emergent storytelling where you roll on the tables and these different characters come into play that you as the dungeon master might not have even expected to show up. And you can design your random encounter tables to be your own and custom to your own world. And I think they say a lot about what your world is like and who the players encounter as they're out in your world exploring it. Random encounters are such an interesting facet of game design that has totally shifted over the 50 years of Dungeons and Dragons. And I think that has a lot to do with how the game philosophy has really changed over that same time period. Old school editions of D&D &D absolutely embraced random encounters. Random encounters are how you populate your wilderness and your dungeons. They make the world feel alive and dynamic for your players to experience. They can put pressure on your players who otherwise have a lot of time to explore the dungeon. Remember, player characters in older versions of the game heal a lot slower than say fifth edition. So random encounters could be a big problem for your players if blades are drawn. You don't have a lot of HP to begin with, but you might also not be at full health from your combat a couple days ago either, which means that a random encounter could be a serious threat to the party. It's often a main factor in their decisions as they're exploring. Do we push forwards into the wilderness or dungeon, or do we turn back to a safe haven where we can rest and recover for a while? But up to this point, I have left out a key element, and it's a piece of the story we'll discuss when we get back to the 61 orcs, and that is the reaction role. 
You see, just because you randomly encounter a monster, it doesn't mean it wants to kill you. So TSR designers made something known as the reaction roll, which helps the dungeon master adjudicate the disposition of the random encounter to the players. Looking at the table, most monsters will end up either unfriendly or indifference towards you, which means that they probably don't resort to immediate violence, but depending on your player's actions, could easily tip one way or another. Now, not every monster needs a reaction roll. If you determine that the encounter is a group of flesh-eating zombies, and well, your players are flesh, they better defend themselves. But if they also encounter a cleric of the pacifist god, well, they probably aren't carrying a weapon at all, nor would they think to use it against the players. Random encounters are ingrained into the procedural play mindset of old school Dungeons and Dragons games. They are what make it interesting and challenging for the players. And they make it interesting and exciting for the DM too. I don't know how the players are going to deal with 61 orcs, but that's not my job to have the answer to that question. My job is to play the cards as they lay and represent the fantasy world as logically as I can within the bounds of the dice rolls. As the story arc style game came into more popularity in the last couple of decades, we've seen a much smaller emphasis on random encounter tables in mainstream D&D. The game design philosophy shifted from experiencing a fantasy world, living in it, and trying to make a name for yourself to being one that is more predestined to set off on a grand adventure of the DM's writing. And those two game styles need very different tools. In 5th edition, random encounters are treated as more of a nuisance than anything that can add value to your game. They're seen as something that slows down the story progression. In games I've seen, they've often been ignored both in dungeons and in the wilderness. Tell me if you've seen this in any of your modern games. The players set off on a long trek through the wilderness to reach some far off dungeon, and the players encounter exactly one carefully planned encounter along the way in which the paladin and wizard, who have used no resources for the day, proceed to go nuclear on and kill the poor bastards the DM put in their way. The PCs win with hardly so much as a scratch, and they continue on their way to the Maze of Doom. That is one way to play the game, and there's nothing wrong with that, but for me, random encounters become a part of the story. I don't prep plot or story, so if my party encounters something random along their latest foray into the wilderness, well, that's just their problem to deal with. And the story that comes from that can be just as interesting as anything else they had set out and planned to do beforehand. When doing my research for this video, I remembered that Xanathar's Guide to Everything introduced random encounter tables for 5th edition. First off, it's telling that they weren't even in the three core rule books, but I digress. Secondly, the authors do start off by saying that not all random encounters have to be combat, which is great, but they go on to contradict themselves by creating random encounter tables that are based off of, you guessed it, level. What is the purpose of level-based random encounter tables if they don't think that combat is going to be something that needs to be balanced around? Basic Expert doesn't care if you're second level or 10th level. 61 orcs is 61 orcs. When you make your encounter tables based off of level, you are telling your players that the world around them is adjusted to their power level. And that's not how it should work. If there's a dragon out there, there's a dragon out there, and that is the player's problem to deal with. It's up to them regardless of their level in modern editions just feels like combat is the default option. So everything is carefully planned to handle that in modern D&D. &D. And for me, I'm just personally not a fan of that anymore. 
I did balance those things when I DM'd 5th edition, and honestly, it felt like a chore. And one I'm glad to give a lot less credence to now as an OSR style GM. If you run 5th edition, you don't have to balance things and you can run your game how you want, making combat not the default. Those are totally valid choices. It's just frustrating when you feel like you are combating what the system is designed for, pun intended. Now you might be wondering, random encounters with no purpose? Doesn't that sound boring? Won't that get bland after a while? And yes, you're right, that would get bland, which is why you add context to your random encounters. What are they doing? Where are they going? What do they want? You can and should add these as elements into columns in your random encounter tables to cover these different contextual items. Why not make them random as well when you're rolling up the random encounter? Tie the context to the locations and other creatures around them, and all of a sudden, 61 orcs is not just 61 orcs, it's something much different. I had two more elements to fill in to give my random encounter of 61 orcs the full context I needed to let the players interact with the game world. First, I needed to know the context. Why were the orcs moving through the hilly grasslands in the first place? Rolling on that section of my table yielded me headed to a gathering. Okay, now I understand. The orcs are headed to a larger gathering of orcs. Why? Well, I didn't exactly know that yet. I could make something up randomly on the spot, but then I thought, why not let my reaction roll help dictate that for me? I decided in the moment, if the reaction roll came up more hostile, then maybe the orcs were gathering for a war or raiding party. And if it's more neutral, then maybe they were just meeting in some sort of gathering of the clans. And if it were positive, then maybe the orcs were headed to a holiday ceremony or celebration that was going on. I make the reaction roll and the dice gods favor the party on this day. It comes up an eight, decidedly neutral. The orcs hail the party under a banner of parlay and the orc leader meets with the group of players. The party learns that the orcs of the five skies are headed to a gathering to discuss business and clan matters amongst the leaders in their annual gathering of the five clans. The party are warned to stay away from the gathering as the grounds are considered sacred to the orcs and any trespassers will be killed. But based on the party's role play decision making and the orcs having that neutral disposition from the reaction role, I decided that the orcs come out modestly amicable towards the party. The leader offers to sell them some extra rations and offers guidance on how to reach the river and the land beyond that the players were hoping to find. In fact, the orc leader has seen the ruins of the lost castle that the party is looking for. But the orcs do not enter, for they sense a dark presence that lingers within. But that is a different story for a different time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.